You ever been in a conflict where the rules were pretty clear and uh, suddenly they did something really nasty. They did something really mean and you say, well, fine, if you're going to do that to me, I'm going to do it right back at you. Friends, the United States has been bullying everyone around the planet with, uh, with using the dollar as a weapon to just beat down on people. And uh, frankly, the world seems to be a little sick of it. So 24 nations have now agreed on to, to join with the BRICS nations. So uh, Brazil, Russia, uh, I always get these wrong, India, uh, China, and South Africa, the BRICS countries, they are creating their own currency, a international currency that they can use for trade. The BRICS countries join with... Um, with a total of 24 countries, right? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa are joined by Saudi Arabia, Iran, Argentina, Indonesia, UAE, Algeria, Egypt, Bahrain, Turkey, and others. A bunch of them are not yet named. Two unnamed ones in East Africa. Is Kenya getting on board? Is Ethiopia getting on board? Friends, according to my math, and uh, this, is, this is crazy, according to my math, those countries make up 49% of the world's population. A new currency that is backed by 49% of the world's population Friends, the dollar isn't backed by that many countries, not that many people. You say, ah, but we got more money. The BRICS currency is going to be backed by 35.9% of the world's GDP. That's a lot. And not all GDP is equal, of course. This is 35.9% of GDP where it's mostly made up of manufacturing and natural resources. Yeah, so uh, whereas the United States is mostly backed by printing money and government spending money. You look at these countries and you're going to see countries that have a low government spending rate. So here's the question. Once they form this currency that's made up of 49% of the world's population, and 35% of the world's GDP. What happens when they sanction us? Oh, Steve, they don't have anything to sanction us for. You're not paying attention, are you? Oh, well, bear countries over there in Eastern Europe attacking civilians. <clears throat> yeah, we've never done that before. Quite frankly, um, the atrocities the Americans have done in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other countries are pretty atrocious. Right now, American weapons are being dropped on civilians in Yemen. And they have been for years. And the United States has done nothing to restrain Saudi Arabia from doing that. A lot of chaos in the world. The CIA has run amok all over the world, uh, overthrowing countries, that conflict in Eastern Europe. Yeah, go back in the history and you'll find that the CIA instigated that. How would we feel if, if a bear country came over to, uh, or, or, or China came over to Mexico, overthrew the government, started trying to put missile batteries up against our border? Yeah. How do we handle that in Cuba? Did we invade the country? Uh, yeah, yeah, we invaded Cuba. We just didn't do it quite so successfully, right? Um, how many countries in Central America and South America have we overthrown? The United States has a lot to answer for. And up to this point, nobody's really been strong enough or had leverage to really hold us to account. The United States has tried to hold the United States to account for a while, um, but we're not doing that anymore. Um, basically, whatever we do around the world is never questioned. 
And so that brings us to this point where 24 nations have decided to band together to kind of put an end to the U.S. bullying. Saudi Arabia is sick and tired of us um, pillaging their oil and disrespecting them and twisting their arm to do whatever we want them to do. Yeah, Iran's sick of us. Russia and China are clearly sick of us. India is tired of us too. Brazil, they, uh, they don't like the United States being the sole superpower out there and they don't like what we do with trade. There's a reason why a lot more of their trade's going to China. They're, they're interacting with a lot of other countries other than the United States now because we've pulled all sorts of crap all over the place. You, you go around the world and you see how many countries are tired of us um, playing a double standard with visas and um, double standards on everything. Do you know that... Um, just Google the State Department, um, the United States State Department's uh, requirements for elections in other countries, uh, what, what hoops they need to jump through in order for the United States State Department to certify those elections. Just go ahead and just look over those and then tell me how many of the United States actually, uh, actually does those. <laughs> they don't. We don't at all. You go down this list and you're going to find a whole bunch of countries that have been aggrieved by the United States one way or another. Now, I'm not saying these countries are necessarily clean. I mean, you, you, you walk into a, a home if you're a police officer and there's a domestic dispute and uh, they're throwing stuff at each other. You listen to one and they're going to tell you how awful the other one is. And then you listen to the other one, they're going to tell you how awful this one is. What's your conclusion? Well, I need to select whoever's right, and then th whatever they say about the other one must be true. Um, and about themselves, right? <laughs> but the thing is, you walk into a dispute like that, and you generally can get the idea that these they're both probably at fault. They both probably, but we've been hearing one side of everything for how many years? We've heard the phrase, might makes right. Well, the United States has had all the might. And um, we've been controlling the narrative since the fall of the Soviet Union. And, uh, yeah, people, people aren't buying it anymore. 49% of the world's population isn't buying the crap that we're selling anymore. And I mean that both figuratively, okay, and I also mean that literally. They're not going to buy our stuff anymore. They're going to use the BRICS currency. And when this happens, there's going to be a drop in the dollar like you would not believe. All these countries are going to say, we don't need dollars anymore. If they don't need dollars anymore, and they start looking at other countries, say Mexico doesn't join the BRICS countries. Mexico is sitting there with a whole bunch of foreign reserves, which is euros and dollars and British pounds and, you know, okay, G7 kind of currency, some yens in there, you know. But suddenly, there's this BRICS currency. They're going to be pressured to liquidate much of their reserves and start piling up BRICS currency so that they can trade with all these other countries. What happens when you have other smaller countries that are bullied into exclusively using BRICS currency for international transfers? That's going to be interesting. And when you see the dollar spiraling with inflation and the BRICS currency being pegged to commodities, which is inflation proof, basically, which one do you want to have sitting in your vault? Hmm? Which one will you, as a country, if you have to have 
billions and tens of billions of dollars of cash sitting in your vault, do you want to have that in dollars and euros, which is rapidly losing value? Or do you want to have that in BRICS currency, which is backed by commodities like oil, silver, gold, wood, like um, lumber and such, backed by food? Those prices are maybe actually going to go up. So you have a pile of paper in your vault that actually is going up in value as opposed to dollars and euros, which is dropping. It's not going to take a rocket surgeon to figure this out. People are going to be like, they're going to hold as many dollars as they feel they need to in order to make the United States happy, and the rest is going to go into BRICS currency. That's what we're looking at, folks. We're looking at a very different world. And when people are hooked on the BRICS currency and they're transferring BRICS currency through electronic means back and forth, what happens when these BRICS countries suddenly says, United States, you're out of line. We're going to cut you out of the BRICS system. Suddenly, we can't buy anything from 50% of the world's population. We can't do trade with 35% of the world's population. Other countries can, but we can't. Is that going to kick us right in the gut? Friends, the shoe is about to go on the other foot. And people that aren't seeing the writing on the wall, they're going to they're gonna have a rude awakening one of these days. What can you do about it? Friends, if you're sitting there with a whole bunch of paper dollars or ones and zeros in your bank account, might want to buy some physical assets like, you know, commodities like silver, gold, platinum, that kind of stuff. Might want to do that. If you want to get your retirement funds out of stocks, bonds, and dollars and into platinum, silver coins, um, this video is brought to you by Genesis Gold Group. Um, down in the description down below, find Jonathan's uh, number. Give them a call and they'll walk you through what it would look like to convert some or all of your IRA or retirement funds over into um, physical metals because the world's changing and the dollar is not where you want to be. And stocks, mark my words, are pegged to the dollar. U.S. stocks are pegged to the dollar. Bonds, you don't even want to know what happens to bonds when the dollar drops in value. Yeah, it's like dollars, but like worse. They're not safe. You, everyone says bonds are safe, they're not. And it frustrates me to no end when people keep saying that. In a market crash, bonds crash harder than stocks do. I mean, just look at 2008. Look at the other crashes out there. Anyway, I digress. But that's important to know. I'm not a financial planner. I'm not giving you financial advice. But anyone can see out there that uh, dollars is not the place to be. All right, folks, um, do what you can out there. If you don't have much currency, make sure you're stocking up on food. Make sure you're stocking up on things that make you a little more self-sufficient. Get a side gig. Who knows if you're going to lose your job. Just try to get ahead of things as best you can. All right, folks. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video useful or helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And also, you might want to check out another video from me right over here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you later. Steve Poplar of The Poplar Report, out.